Rampage. Hey guys, this is Whisper, coming at you again with another IO video. This one is the first commentary that I've done in a little while. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about, gosh, everything really. 7.22c, 7.22d, the way that I'm thinking in this game, and try and give you some thoughts and updates into how I'm trying to play these days. And I keep you guys, uh, g give you guys a little bit more information and education about how to play this hero. Um... <clears throat> This one I'm playing with my friend Fur. Uh, Fur is the Ursa, and sure enough, uh, this is not an easy game. Uh, the reason I want to talk about this game specifically is because it is a really big comeback. This team that I'm playing with is garbage. Uh, I don't know if anyone watching this doesn't really know my play style, but I don't have a lot of patience for people who don't know what they're doing. I'm here to win. I have put too much time into this to waste... Uh, you know, trying to teach people what to do. So, uh, this Rubik really wants to try lane, uh, and no one wants to go top. And as a result, uh, Ursa and I TP top when we really wanted to go safe lane. Uh, but it, you know, you can't leave a Medusa to free farm. This this shit's real basic, guys. We don't. <sighs> I'm I'm about ten years older than the demographic of this game, and. My God, it's the worst thing. <laughs> like, oh man, you 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 learn a. L I don't know. Um, dealing with pe people like, I mean, you guys are are gonna see some really intense misplays. Not by me, but by the rest of the team. And if you watch the mini map right now, you can basically see it start to happen. Um, Life Stealer decides that he wants to jungle, which is what his original plan was anyway, and Rubik just leaves bottom lane. I don't notice this in the game at the time, because I'm focusing on trying to get my kills. Uh, her what I'm really trying to fo uh, focus on is harassing. Uh, my real focus right now is a level 1, level 2, level 3 IO is to be uh, denying creeps, number one. Number two, I want to be harassing enemy heroes, not to the point where I can solo kill them, but to the point where they're at a, a maybe if we run into them really hard and we do 70% of their HP and damage, if they're at 50% HP, they die. If they're at 100% HP, they run away and it's like nothing. And they use a salve and it's like nothing ever happened. So the more I can harass someone down to 80%, 70%, 60%, 50%, uh, the more likely we can have a successful kill, uh, you know, when someone moves out of position. Sure enough, this is where it all clicks. I go, why is Rubik top? Oh my god, no one's bottom. This is the dumbest shit in the world, guys. We should know how the, the like, we should know the basics of Dota that we should be splitting our XP. Like, the, the very basic answer for why you don't want to do this is because, you know, now we're all getting the split XP that you would get in a tri-lane, and the reason why this is normally okay in a standard game is because one person would be off-lane getting solo XP, and this trade-off of the importance of that solo XP character versus the tri-lane, and, you know, the given situations of the people that you're playing against, and what needs to be performed in, at that moment, all of this is more important than the split between the three and the one, but to have no one in that lane completely ruins the point of what we're doing. Uh, Fur knows that he can dive into a tower. I have a healing salve, and we play together a lot, so he knows what my general uh, limitations are. Um, I realize that I have level two spirits at this point, so I make sure to level that, that up and pop that uh, before we run into Medusa, and I salve here to make sure that Fur can actually turn into this uh, ogre and dive again uh, now that I've healed him back up to more than 50% HP. Um, the way I did not have to use my salve in the first dive because I was able to pull aggro from the tower. You guys rewind the uh, 30 seconds when we were diving into ogre rage. Uh, I was able to walk in front of Ursa and sort of draw the aggro from the, the tower to me. Uh, which sort of, you know, I had 100% HP, I didn't need to salve uh, for, for myself. So here I'm trying to, like, show people that someone needs to go bottom. 
Uh, this is not the right way to be playing. We need to be changing our tactics. Sure enough, uh, these guys don't don't get it. Um, Radiant's bottom tower yeah. is under attack. Uh, LS is jungling. Are fortified. Rubik is a twat. <laughs> And uh, there's just there's not much to be said. I'm sure that some people are going to watch this and be upset that I'm a human that has opinions about these sorts of things. Uh, but the reality is that, uh, Christ, guys, you know, Radiant's I'm 28 years old. I have a job. I do this occasionally on the weekends now as like a thing for fun. And when I jump into a game and someone doesn't even understand the concept of like, oh, I probably shouldn't be auto attacking the creeps. Uh, I should probably stay in my lane that I chose to go to. Like, if we can't get with these basics... On a greater note, which I'll try and draw this conversation towards, I've walked bottom. If no one's gonna take that solo XP in that, in that lane, it's gonna be me. Uh, so I'm gonna hit level 6-7, and the reason for that is because I'm realizing now this isn't going well. My team is... Winning at the moment, but it's pretty clear that positionally we're lacking. Uh, we might be winning in general gold right now, although very, very clearly not by much at all. Uh, and XP-wise, we can't possibly be on the front end of that. Um, part of what it means to be an IO player is to try and understand the heroes that are worth supporting on your team. This is more conceptual than uh, anything else, but it's important, and I try and talk to people about it when, when I can. Uh, I realize here, what what they've done, I'm going to jump back and forth between these concepts, so I apologize in advance, but what they've done is because we've left this lane entirely, they went, alright, they have a level 25 techies, or whatever uh, he, he is. Yes, he is uh, 25. So we're going to let the level 25 techies get solo XP. He can push, and this is going to work out pretty well. This is the only reason that I'm able to not get ruined in this bottom lane. It's because they've the Marana has left, and it's just him. It's just techies and me. Uh, and with some relatively smart plays, like tethering in and targeting the bomb so I can blow it up as soon as I get there, uh, we're able to make stuff work. Um... I, what, the point that I was trying to, trying to get to previously before Techie, Techies makes his next move, which as we can see here, uh, he's cutting behind tower and placing bombs back there to blow up the creep wave and keep me busy. Uh, still getting solo XP, still loving it. Uh, what you must recognize is that if there is no one on the team that is good enough to be the carry, you must be the carry. And that's, that's pretty difficult for people who play IO, because, oh, by the way, best way to counter that strategy, just back up and hit the bomb. It's not, it, he doesn't know what to do now. It's I got him on the front, I got him on the back. As long as I don't run down lane once he's level 6, he's not going to get me with any uh, 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 remote mines. So this lane is pretty on lock right now. I can control... Uh, pushing, although I have spirits out, which doesn't really allow me to do that. I should have not cast that spirits there. Um, but I should be more controlling of how I'm pushing and denying in order to maintain a uh, lane equilibrium. Here I'm feeling out bombs because I, you know, know that the I do not want to walk down lane. I do not want to chase a techies blindly into where he has stuff. I want to hang out right here. I have relocate now. I'm six, so I'm looking around the map if I can go for a gank. Uh, possibly kill somebody. Uh, but just to finish off the previous point while we have a moment, uh, I need to be the carry this game. Uh, Fur's really good, and I trust Fur to recover, but I've had to leave Fur now with this crap Rubik uh, while I come bottom in order to try and maintain some semblance of lane uh, <sighs> structure. Um, I have my basic items here. Uh, soul Ring to maintain my own mana as well as the mana of my allies. Wand in order to main, maintain my HP and the HP of my allies, especially in a burst scenario, which is very helpful for Io. And then Urn, uh, one for damaging others and sort of finishing off kills, and then two for healing myself, for healing others through Tether. 
Uh, so I have my core items set up. I want to go into a carry build, so I'm not running mechanism, I'm not going anything in the hard support, I'm not going to go holy locket. Sure enough, a Meepo s shows up. And, and actually, this gameplay, I'm, I'm going to jump around the whole time guys, I apologize in advance. Uh, this gameplay will show you really good ways that they have changed how relocate, and not more, more so how tether has been changed. Um, I've realized, I think actually in this gameplay, if not in the in the very next one, that I cannot tether while rooted anymore. That's enormous for an IO player. Uh, the whole point of having tether was that if someone roots you or even stuns you, you can just tether the moment be before and go wee and get pulled out and you, you don't have to worry. Uh, the whole concept of that being changed really reprioritizes how you should be thinking about uh, the ability to remove stuns, uh, remove roots from your, from yourself. Uh, it increases the prevalence that Yule Scepter and uh, Lotus Orb should be getting because of the ability to, Lotus Orb especially, uh, to remove and block roots from yourself, which is it's pretty tough to survive against a Meepo now, guys. Like, there's there was some pretty sneaky escapes. If you controlled your own creep and sent it away, you could tether to the creep and pull yourself out of his root range. But if you're rooted, you can't do that. And you can't relocate, and you can't TP. Uh, you, you can't Glimmer Cape. He'll see you while you're rooted. Uh, your options start to wear pretty thin. You can force staff, but you're really starting to build out of your element here. Um, anyways... I'm building for a Helm of the Dominator. The idea behind this being that I can control the creep that I'm running with, and when I control the creep, uh, I can control my speed much more clearly, and I have more speed for the most part than when I'm tethering to actual uh, players than when I'm doing it to my own creep. Uh, the healing from Helm of the Dominators is incredibly strong. Please see p previous videos on that subject. Link somewhere, description, I'll give it to you somewhere. Uh, and then tertiarily, the idea that I need something that gives me speed in the end game to be able to better kill people, uh, position in fights, all that sort of stuff. Um, and then I guess on a fourth note, which I've kind of talked about before, but it's always good to re-mention, if you dominate a creep with Helm of the, of, the, of, the, of the Dominator, and then move Helm of the, of the Dominator to your backpack where you don't gain the healing, you don't gain any of the stats, you still control the creep, uh, which means in the end game, if you have Heart of Tarask, this is a great way to set up your seventh slot, is to dominate a creep, move Helm of the, of the, of the Dominator out, and then build into a better item that fills that slot. Um, here, similar idea, killed by uh, people because I, well, I was able to kill the Meepo, which honestly was a pretty fair fair trade. Anytime you can die and then the Meepo dies after, it's, or, well, you die, you kill the Meepo first and then you die after, it's worth it. Uh, if you die before the Meepo does, it's not necessarily worth it. Um, but yeah, here we're trying to... I also, how did, I'm pretty sure they got that tower. I don't know how that wasn't denied. I'm pretty sure the creep was hitting fur. I, I, Someone explain to me how that works. Um, but yeah, conceptually here, I'm working towards this basic healing item that is going to give me speed. It's going to, buy fur. It's going to give me speed. It's going to give me a base strong healing that will heal one target as well as myself. Uh, and it also increases my DPS and my ability to farm uh, using... Seder Tormentor using the tomato. I don't know what his real name is. Hell Beast? Hell, Hell, Hell Bear? One of those. Um, and then the physical damage buff from Alpha Wolf, which is the number one best creep to dominate in the endgame anyway. Um, all of that gives you physical uh, damage to increase your farming, which increases your item gain, which increases all that. Like, the Seder Tormentor damage spell has like a six second cooldown. It's insane. Um, here, I want to try and relocate to pick up any kills that I can. I cinch the Murano, and I'm trying to get the Meepo. Um, I really hope I don't die here. Um, no, I don't, thank god. Um, <laughs> um, it's, getting, it's getting dicey, boys. I definitely it, The game doesn't end two and two, let's just say that. Um, yeah, I want to try and finish this off uh, because it gives me a lot of advantage. And from there, we're going to have to go carry. 
Um, and the really the way that I'm playing Carry Io these days is Aghanim Scepter, because the damage that comes out of Aghanim Scepter is unbeatable, unbeatable. You cannot do better than it. It's there for the gold cost. It's you know you could buy nine Satanics, but we don't have all, all day. Like we've got places to be, um, guys. Aghanims is the way. Uh, a normal spirits cast on Io gives you five damage orbs. That spell has a 20 second cooldown. A 19 second... No, it, it, I'm wrong. It has a 20 second cooldown. The spirits last for 19 seconds. So in 20 seconds, you gain five spirits. In an Aghanim si situation, you can... As, as soon as you blow up the spirits, you spawn a new one. You spawn a new one every second. So, at max capacity, in 20 seconds of an Aghanim Scepter, you have 20 damage orbs. That is four times the damage output that you would normally do with your spirits. These have an AoE function, these basically double in damage at level 15, and these have a slow function at level 10. So the reality is that if you can tether to a creep, move it 500 move speed uh, just by tethering to it, and you have an infinitely respawning series of slowing damage orbs. And what item do I build after Aghanims? Veil of Discord. Increase that damage by 25%. Gives you regen, gives you armor, gives you intelligence. You never, I mean, you never have to worry about your mana again once you have Aghanims. Because you never actually have to cast your spirits again. You only have to cast your other three spells. Uh, so they, you end up being far more mana reliant once you have Aghanims. It's a little buff that no one ever really tells you about. Uh, so you don't, you can basically sell your soul ring. Uh, normally I would sell my wand and keep my soul ring because the mana gain from the soul ring was so important that you couldn't lose it. But now that you don't need to move your arm like this, but also don't need to... Be, uh, um, uh, see, I'm looking at my own arm in the camera and I'm getting distracted, boys. It's uh, bad times. You don't need to cast as much mana once you have agonims and as a result you can keep the wand, which has the healing function, and get rid of the soul ring which has the mana function normally this is not this is not possible uh, so here you can also see that I've picked up one of my favorite mid-game creeps which is the Seder Tormentor uh, one it gives you plus 5.5 HP regen in an AoE anytime IO has healing in an AoE you should all get all, all I, I don't want to say we should all get a little boner but we should all get a, a little boner women in Included. This is not a sexist argument. Um, we should all be excited by the idea of healing in an AoE because whenever it happens on IO, uh, not only does IO heal, which is increased by tether to the target, but the target also heals through the AoE. So even if you have a low level tether, you're still basically double healing the target through it, any base AoE. Uh, in this way, uh, the what am I trying to say? The uh, headdress that gives you 2 HP in an AoE heals the other target for all... It used to when the uh, tether was 1.1 HP. 1.1 times multiplier at level 1. You would heal your target for almost 5 HP per second. Uh, and when you bought a ring of health for... You know, which is a much more expensive item to buy and much more difficult to buy. You need to buy it in one item as compared to three. Uh, this also heals your target for essentially, what, six Radiant HP region? Uh, so the, any sort of healing uh, that's in an AoE, you know, you know, big shout out to Helm of the Dominator here, and one of the reasons why it's so powerful, is a massive buff for Io. Uh, so uh, having that healing coming through, see, again, for running into a techies very very dicey uh, and of course uh, first my friend here i want to make sure he's not dying coming in to make sure he's alive um but yeah you can see here in my in my itemization i'm running towards ags uh i've got the axe first uh, i think that's what that's what it's called uh the big stick that gives you plus 10 strength uh because i want to be able to farm faster i don't care too much about increasing my mana pool right now I really want to focus on increasing my uh, HP and my strength, which gives me more damage. So, and healing as well to a smaller extent, but really what I'm focused on is the damage um, and the HP so that when Meepo jumps me like this, 
guys see me use every single thing that, that I have as Shadow Fiend just stares at me. Um, this is a comeback game, boys. I'm telling you, it's not going to be easy. Um, I hope you guys had a good watch of what just happened there because a whole lot in terms of what Io can do in a root situation is very clearly just gone. Um, normally, if you're rooted and you relocate during the root, you should still be able to relocate. But if you're rerooted, which is normally pretty hard to do, but Meepos are kind of known for that sort of thing, uh, when you're rerooted during the relocate, it, it'll cancel it. Apparently, you can't even tether during a root now. <laughs> Fucking news to me two days ago. Um, but yeah, I... I f uh, f four staff... Four staff out of root range. Hope he doesn't re-root re you and tether to something else. Or spend 4,000 gold on a so uh, uh, Lotus Orb and cancel the root and re-root him if he roots you. But even then, it doesn't kill him. It just gives you an out to escape. Yule Scepter is 1,300 gold cheaper, but is mana that you really don't need and speed that you really don't need so i don't i don't know what we do here boys uh I'll leave ideas in the comments because you know i'm still figuring the, the, this one out myself meepo specific counters in terms of of itemization let me know um but yeah they've gotten down our tower they've gotten down our first racks and from here we really start a pushback I am working towards my Aghanims. Once I do that, I know that my damage is going to increase tremendously. <laughs> sure enough, I thought my team was like right behind me, and I was like, "We're going to get them! Get that Meepo!" Uh, sure enough, I turn, I turn, I turn around, and everyone's run up a cliff, and I die. Um, but yeah, you can't glimmer cape through that route. He'll see you through it. Uh, you go crazy high armor, he, he poofs and that's magic. You go magic and he melees and that's physical. Uh, I don't know, like, I don't know. Um, anyways, my instinct is to increase my damage by four times, which means I'm going Aghanims. Also, I mean, Aghanims, the slow is also something that people don't talk about. The ability, because... By the time that your fifth spirit has hit the guy, two of your spirits have already respawned, at least, um, to hit him again. So you basically have seven, if not eight, spirits that will hit the guy continuously before you've smashed them into him faster than they'll respawn, and you kind of have to wait a few seconds for them to start floating around again. Uh, so eight, eight spirits in a row is basically ten seconds of being slowed by eight, like eight percent. It's, it's a lot. It's a great way to set up enemies to let your teammates kill them. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Guys, I, I don't know how much negativity I'm going to throw in, in the all chat here, but yeah, I was I was not happy at this point. I had just played a, re a really terrible game before this, and I really just wanted a, a, an easy game, and sure enough, the Rubik that doesn't know where to stand is... 1500 gold below their worst player um jeez man it's and and the and the the meepo is 7 or 6k up so there's a lot of room to make up here uh i grab another creep that i, I like to work with called I, I call it the net creep because it throws a net i don't know what it's actually called um but the idea behind net creep is that I can use net creep to pin enemies that I would otherwise be unable to uh, not like because Io again only really has a slow. So as we can see here, um, I'm able to interrupt channeling spells. I'm able to I, I believe I have to tri I have to triple check because again roots uh, pff, I don't know apparently I was out of the loop. Um, but I have to go back now and sort of recheck what's doable and what roots actually uh, ch cancel or don't cancel anymore. Uh, but the root, the net creep is very useful for being able to do, again, what your s Aghanim spirits are trying to do, uh, which is to set up enemies to get jumped on by your allies. 
uh, the slow uh, continuously, as well as the, the damage, you know, a 50% HP guy who can't run away is basically a sitting duck for the rest of your team to jump in. I make sure to heal up before we run in, and I, I can see that we're running into more techies mines, and I just, I know I don't want to run blindly through that. So I'm clearing up these creeps, which have aggroed to me. The fight has basically ended, um, but I'm positioning to where if I need to support uh, my Ursa, I can. Yeah, sure, sure enough, techies had mines in there, and he went in to finish off the Ursa. I get stunned into the Medusa, all just stuns me again, and sure enough here I can tether to my own creep and run away at 500 miles per hour, and I'm finally saved by the Shadow Fiend who decided to do something. Um, yeah, I'm about 300, I was hoping to cut off the Medusa there. The idea was that I, I, was, I was hoping Medusa would, would run up towards the, his own shrine. Uh, here I... I don't know, I think I'm just panicking. Uh, I'm trying to run away from the Meepo, because I know the person who's gonna root me and kill me will be the Meepo, like, right now. Uh, so I'm trying to put as much room between him and my relocate return point, so that I'll buy myself more time to get away. But sure enough, without a creep to tether to, I'm pretty slow. If I was really snazzy, I might have considered running rather than running back for that ruin which was pretty greedy running directly to the creep camp helm the dom dominating a creep tethering to it and just running and hoping that i would have had the speed to beat out the, the meepo's roots um but like i said i'm i'm pretty frustrated at this point so i i presume that my decision making skills are, are not 100 percent and as a result i'm just i'm not focusing so hard uh but like i said this is a, this is a comeback game and i i wouldn't show you one where we just lose out lose outright so there's some uh there's some room to be made yet i come back into the game and i see there's a great team fight happening i want to relocate into it to keep my um i do know that while i don't like shadow fiend he is the most powerful player that i have to, to support uh, more so than my my person Sure enough, man, if Meepo roots me, there's just nothing I can do. I haven't itemized against it. If I was smart, I was greedy enough in this game, as I had been in previous games, to run Agadims before Veil of Discord. Normally, in both cost as well as in theory, uh, you could see that going a uh, Veil of Discord first would give you both the armor that would keep me alive in this situation, additional health regen, um, and you know, could increase the, my team's magic damage r uh, right now, which is not insignificant with the uh, Shadow Fiend um, raises. But I sort of went out rushing into the Ags, thinking that I really needed that damage. And while I'm getting kicked in the nuts right now, uh, I think in about five minutes, once I can complete it and really start using those slows to my advantage, we're going to see the tide start to turn. Again, they're able to take out... Uh, I, I don't think they do. Uh, I think... Oh, no. <laughs> they do. Uh, they're able to take out our uh, bottom... I believe it's a melee rex. Um, so, yeah. We're, we're looking in a pretty tough spot. Our ranged rex, which can't heal, is taking damage right now. Middle. The DD Marana is pushing our top. It's not looking good. Uh, I'm still 250 gold from my agonims i have taken over one of their creeps because i really don't care who i control right now i just need some form of uh, movement to keep me uh, uh alive on, on the battlefield i don't care about bonuses we'll grab those later um but right now speed is more important i've hit 15 i'm actually at 16 uh so my spirits are really starting to have some impact now uh they're pretty weak prior prior to this especially this late in the game uh, but once you can get the level 15 talent, they really start to have some impact. Especially in close range team fights like this, where you're up against a Meepo and stuff like that. Uh, so this is a great play by Shadow Fiend that actually keeps us pretty well in the game. Uh, we lose our mid racks in the process. I think our bottom racks? No. Uh, mid racks in the process. Um, and yeah, we're trying to chase out and get as many kills as we can to um, keep our keep whatever advantage we can here. Um, I finished Ags, and you guys will see, uh, you know, I'm pretty low on mana right now. I, I don't think you're ever going to see me low on mana ever again. 
uh, the reality is that because you don't have to cast your major spell that you cast every 20 seconds, uh, even with Soul Ring, you kind of have to pick your times that you cast it. Uh, now with this, you're only really casting Overcharge and Relocate every Blue Moon. Um, so your mana usage goes way down, and as a result, um, your Honestly, one of the knocks that the, one of the downsides of Agonims that that isn't talked about is that you actually slowed. I would argue that you slow down your farming DPS because normally you use the explosions of the spirits. You can track them, run into a bunch of creeps, let them explode. Uh, that will help you clear out waves of enemies. Now your spirits don't explode, so you don't have the advantage of. I mean, obviously they're always going, so you always have the advantage to have some. Uh, passive magic damage, but you don't get to clear creep waves like you used to, where you just ran, run in and go bam, and the whole thing goes. Uh, but the trade-off, again, with the slows and the DPS is pretty worth it. Um, again, here, I'm trying to get farm. I know I need to finish my next item. I need to increase m my damage more, or else the whole ag has been for, for nothing. But I also know that I need to uh, make sure that I... Sorry, I need to drink. Swifter than ever. And sweet. I need to make sure that when a team fight breaks out, like when this Meepo jumps me, uh, that I am able to respond in a way that I can actually do some damage. So here I'm able to uh, take up a new creep, which makes more sense, the net creep. I get to run out, and it gives me the speed to uh, do so. I jump to Fur now to give him some heals before the next fight. Um, but you, you guys can see the power of that Aghanims. Uh, that Meepo couldn't run. Uh, he was pinned entirely by the movement of the spirits. He took a relatively good amount of damage. I wouldn't say I was the one who crushed him. Uh, but at the same time, uh, he certainly couldn't break out when he was pinned. Not, not only by the spirits, but with the root creep in the net creep in tow helps as well. Um, with that assist in mind, I'm relatively close now to my Veil of Discord. I don't think I care too much anymore about the Seder Tormentor. I think the reality is I need to be thinking more endgame. Uh, so an Alpha Wolf, which gives my whole team 30% physical damage buff, would be great. Net creep is pretty positionally important. In this game, I I, can, I I like the idea of being able to pin down a single Meepo and let the rest of, of the team finish it off. Um, and then, that's really it. Uh, yes, we have Gem, but sure enough, the Shadow Fiend doesn't realize that he has to stand close to the bombs to for us to actually blow them up. So we're trying to ping him, or... Here I'm just trying to bait the techies into just blowing up some, or all of them. And, then, and here, here's just poor clicking on my part. I'm, I'm too used to controlling the two creeps. I'm used to controlling Io and the creep as one unit, so rather than being smart and separating my controls beforehand, I just uh, clicked and grabbed and got my creep killed in the process. Um, so I've swapped it now for this one. It's uh, not a particularly good creep in this instance. It gives everyone, I think, a 13% movement speed buff, uh, which is nice, you know, moving faster means you can position faster to farm faster, you can enter and run around fights faster, uh, but it's by no means my go-to. It's more of a, you know, uh, nothing better. Uh, Ursa has broken my tether, and sure enough, I relocated into a Marana illusion like a professional. Um, last time I listened to Lifestealer give me advice on when to gank, I have my veil done, uh, and this sets me up pretty well. This is basically most of my damage finished. Uh, at level 20, I think this game was played before 7.22D, uh, so I do believe I go Aghanims for the level 20 talent, but gold is fine. Like, we can have a longer discussion about that next time I die, but uh, this is also not good. I allow myself to get separated from the Ursa, and I'm not near a creep, but I am able to run behind into the team fight and assist the Shadow Females. And that works out pre like pretty well. I, I should have stayed in. I... I ran out in a bit of a panic, not knowing how much damage I was taking from the Medusa, 
and sure enough, I actually let Fur die by doing that, so I should not have run out there. Um, here I just make a, a straight dive for the techies, hoping that some sort of play will happen, and sure enough, that uh, brain-dead Rubik makes the best play of, that he's made all game, uh, lifts the guy to counter his TP, and we get the kill. So somehow, uh, with no racks, and just an ags and a little bit of positioning, we have team wiped a team that was maybe 10 kills above us. So this is a real momentum change here. Uh, we can start to do a lot more in terms of, I mean, I don't think we necessarily push right now, but plays like that are things to be pushing off of. Um, I want to focus on farming. I know right now in my head, I'm going, okay, Agadims was the right call. Vale was the right call. I'm able to be impacting team fights heavily right now. That triple kill b uh, back there, that that was me. Uh, this this team wipe, I, I was able to, to do this. The next thing that I need is to be keeping myself alive like a carry. And Heart of Tarask has always been a very powerful item for Io. Uh, one in that you, in a healing context if I was healing for a shit ton of HP his partner's healing for 1.5 times a shit ton of HP which is a shit ton of HP um, the reality is that when you're healing yourself uh, especially when you're the carry people don't understand how th they think you're supposed to be a support so they think you should be able to be 3 hit you know with the deso and sure enough, if you have a heart, of, you have a heart of Tarask at three and a half thousand HP. You're running around like a tank, uh, healing other players in the fight to full HP, and then you yourself are winning the fight. Um, it's it's a pretty powerful combination of healing and damage and carry that not a lot of players can combo. This is one of the saddest and greatest plays in the game, so I'm gonna let this one play out. if I went behind them. Yeah, let's go behind them. Oh, perfect! I caught them all! You guys have no idea how upset Fur was. Oh, he was so pissed. Oh my god, he was... The reason the screen's not moving is because I'm typing to him in chat being like, No, that was a good idea. I defend the logic behind why I just did that. We just happened to get screwed by techies. Like, that, that was a good call. I could have team-wiped that whole team right there. I just happened to get countered by the one hero who could counter me. Here I decide that they're trying to push middle off this, so a smart player would try and cut the, cre the creep wave. I try and pull it to this creep wave, but they're, all the creep waves are gone, so the creeps de-aggro, de and I just decide to bring the creep back. Um, but yeah, you, you can see here they're, they're getting pretty desperate to try and finish this off and get Megas. Uh, but the Meepo, the Meepo dives, and I think that's a really heinous misplay. If he had stayed at the tower, I think they would have been able to do a lot more damage. So I'm trying to tell Fur just to stay alive, man. Stay alive till just five, five more seconds. To use the time to get in there and heal and uh, heal you. There I go. I'm trying to give him as much tower heal as I can. My HP regen is pretty good at this point. I don't have Heart of Tarask yet, but I, you know, through, through, through Tether, he's probably healing close to 40 HP, if not more. No one's able to get the lift off there, but yeah, we're, we're in a pretty tough spot now. We have two top racks, and that's it. Uh, no more towers. Uh, one really good push from them, and they get Megas, that's, or Ancients, or Megas? Megas, and it's basically over. Um, they get Ancients, that's not how that works. <laughs> Uh, man, that's that should work. Just ancients walking down mid lane, that'd be sweet. Um, anyways, so that's like sudden death, two hour games. All the creeps switch to mega, switch to switch to ancients. Anyways, we're getting we're getting off track. Um, I know at this point that I'm a relatively good push. Um, I have the magic damage to be able to clear creep waves. Once I'm 25, every time the thing that I'm tethered to attacks, I attack. 
uh, which is, you know, basically tr double or triple my current attack speed. Uh, so the idea being that he's uh, one of the best creeps to take over in the end end game when you're level 25 is any of like any standard creep, because the creep base attack speed is one of the lowest attack speeds in the game uh, and being able to attack every time a uh, ranged creep attacks that's overcharged you hit very very fast so that's i think that's my logic here is i'm gonna try and farm with this little creep uh i'm not 25 yet so obviously that's not my logic i just made that bullshit up um i just picked a creep because i needed the speed uh once that 25 second timer of my emblem dominator uh, stops I presume I will recreep a different creep. But it's working, right? Like, I'm gaining. I do not want to be up there. I back up real quick. I'm like, nope, 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 nope. Uh, what I am doing is farming pretty efficiently. I'm pretty close to Heart of Tarask here. And I think that's my real endgame item. After Heart of Tarask, you can kind of play it, like, play around with whatever. Do you, do you want to make Spirit Vessel to block their healing? Okay. Um. Do you want to go Diffusal Blade to counter the Medusa by draining out all the mana? Maybe. You know, you have a lot of options there. You're pretty fat, you're, you're pretty powerful. Um, one of the things that I'm not doing here, there we go, I mean, you can use Veil a little, little bit earlier. Um, but yeah, I wanted to try and save that Life Stealer. Really should be trying to save um, the Shadow Fiend. And sure enough, I tether to, to the Shadow Fiend. Try and get out, can't tether. Try and relocate. He reroutes, and I die. Um, I buy back. However, uh, I still have my creep that I can control, so I can get back to the fight pretty quick. I uh, TP to the front, and this is what I mean. I see that meepo is low. That kill is pretty important. I, I want to be there for that. Sure enough, I can slow people down. Um, Fur is able to get the techies kill, and I tether to Fur. I earn myself, but too early. Uh, and there's actually an arrow from uh, Medusa that takes it off. And here I am overcharging Fur to give him more attack speed so that he can stack his things more efficiently. I hit level 25, and sure enough, that Medusa melts. So, here we are with a 100 second dead Medusa. We've wiped their team for like maybe the second or third time. Uh, things are starting to really look up. We can see some momentum building here. We see the tide starting to change. My Heart of Tarask is in my pocket, which makes me feel very safe. Holy shit, I have 3,800 HP. That's crazy. Um, it's, you know, I didn't even build a stick into a, a wand yet. And that's without building, you know, Spirit Vessel would basically make me 4K, which is just nuts. Um, but... Uh, this puts me in a pretty good position. If you guys can see item-wise, and we can just take a moment to think about endgame IO building, right? You have your sixth slot is with your gem. Theoretically here, you could not have a gem and you could build into a better item that would take that. Deso would be a great choice for the armor strip and for the relocate pushing. Um, Satanic or any sort of HP regen would be great because you're attacking over and over when everything, when anything else attacks. Even if you're stunned uh, and you're tethered to something and that something is attacking, you'll attack every time that thing attacks. So that healing upon you and through your tether, see how fat I am? I take 3,000 damage and like mines, I don't even care. Um, and I regen it all immediately. Um, so this really demonstrates the power that that has. I can just tank the tower, the creep can tank the tower, it doesn't matter. Um, the pushing that I can do now, the power that we have to regen in between fights. Um, I, I, I'm i guessing Techies doesn't have too many bombs here. Um, probably a few, which he clearly does, uh, but not enough to freak me out. Um, so here, I'm just running with my creep at the tower. They are gonna wanna dive, I don't play that. Um, I do tether here to try and heal up Fur, because I have Mar my Mar Mar Rask, and it's Fur. I gotta try and keep him alive. Um, but, yeah, you guys can see that even under tower, he's gaining, you know, 2,000 HP. Um, so I'm desperately running away from the Meepos, screaming, because I know Meepo is the only thing that can really wreck me. And sure enough, as soon as the Meepo gets pinned, I turn, let my spirits collide over and over, um, and it's done. Here, I relocate with Fur behind the Medusa, because uh, I want to make sure that we can cut off the Medusa from running away. And we actually put ourselves in a pretty good position to chase down the Techies. 
uh, which I believe uh, runs back. They have a Marana ult somehow. Um, but yeah, the the game is pretty much done here. We uh, were able to come all the way back. We were able to be pretty smart in some team fights and position ourselves well. And we're able to itemize in such a way that our damage, and healing, and impact are maximized. Uh, and that's how you're able to take your shit team and win for them. They deserve it. No, do you definitely. So enjoy that win. Hopefully through all this jargon there's been some helpful information. Um, and I believe, uh, yeah, I'm pretty proud of how this game turned out. Um, so, uh, sure enough, you know, really high uh, hero damage. I'm, you know, basically less than, I'm just about a thousand underneath Sh uh, Shadow Fiend as an IO, but I also have 13,000 healing uh, and, you know, all that good stuff. So hopefully there was some interesting info here. I hope you guys learned some stuff. We'll be chatting soon. All right, bye guys. See ya.